And I'm Bob Bush with the Phillips Group. We're at the 13th annual Hakama Corporate Governance Conference at the fabulous Armani Hotel. And I have the pleasure of sitting with Dr. Stephen Davis, who is an associate director at Harvard University Law School. And he also sits on the Hakama Institute's International Advisory Council. Thank you for joining us. Bob, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we just sat through a, a very um, good panel on uh, agility and the role that agility plays in corporate governance. And your leading question was, there's a riptide of issues that corporations are experiencing from you know, much more proactive government intervention, much more proactive shareholder activism, uh, technology shifts. What kind of advice can you give a corporation that is going through that kind of, of, of riptide from the standpoint of corporate governance? Corporate governance is not just a nice to have, it's really a must have. And the reason why is because board members really need to be the ones that unlock the ability of companies to address fundamental um, disruptive change. And those disruptive changes are vast. Board culture is very important in terms of addressing disruptive risk. Anytime I come to Dubai, I'm just amazed by the dynamism of this place. Mm -hmm. And it's an example that leadership can overcome um, any cultural barriers to change. Boards have to do the same thing. Um, if we think about the kinds of risks that are kind of systemic now that boards have to address, it's technology risk, I mean, cyber, attacks are common. Um, the onset of artificial intelligence is extremely disruptive uh, with the potential for a serious change at many companies. We have a real change as well in the kind of uh, attitudes of international capital towards companies, including in this uh, in the GCC. Let's take some of these these uh, these issues and how they should be addressed. Mm. And without question, there's a cultural element to this. So how do you attempt to balance the international best practices around corporate governance, particularly in light of your desire to attract international capital, but still recognize the cultural elements that are endemic to the region. Yeah, I think that's the real critical issue. We have lots of family companies, of course, in the GCC region, but there's no doubt that a company's ability to handle uh, tough issues and disruptive risks rests essentially, first of all, on leadership, and it has to be the chair, typically, of the company or the board. Uh, that is really aware and conscious of the need for a, uh, an active board. Not a board that's a club, mm -hmm. not a board that is uh, composed of yes people, mm -hmm. uh, but a board that is asking good questions. That's ultimately what needs to happen. And it means there are implications, in other words, for board composition. Who's on the board? Mm -hmm. uh, what kinds of skill sets do they represent? Uh, how does the board get information? Uh, all those issues are critical to being able to handle risk. Well, in your panel, you, you talked about one of the key abilities is this notion of agility. Can you please explain how the notion of agility is relevant to corporate governance in dealing with uh, this riptide of issues? You know, a lot of corporate governance, as I say, for most of my 30 years, has been about protecting rigidity more than uh, enabling agility. Uh, so we've got, and rigidity is all about preserving the power of those that are in, entrenched in the company mm -hmm. without change. Mm -hmm. And we all understand that companies have, especially if they're family controlled, uh, the families want to retain control and that's completely legitimate. In fact, family controlled companies typically do better than widely held companies, we know that. Uh, the question is, how do you balance control against being able to be adaptable, being able to encourage unconventional thinking? You need to have a board that works together. You need to have positive group dynamics. You can't have a board where people are at each other's throats. Uh, you can't have a board with disruption inside the boardroom. But you do need 
people inside the boardroom to challenge mm -hmm. in a civil way, in a respectful way, to ask the right questions, uh, and not simply to say that just because something has been done this particular way for X number of years, that that's what needs to go forward. Thank you very well said, and thank you for joining us at the Phillips Group. It's my pleasure. Yes, sir. Thanks, Bob. Right.